NBA again attempting to add an in-season tournament to the calendar. Um, and I'll kind of read the story, and then we'll kind of get into it, Tyree. So this uh, this article coming from Adrian Wojnarowski says, the NBA has found traction on a future in-season tournament. The league and union are discussing a structure that includes a December pool play, pre-Christmas quarterfinals, semifinal, and finals with a $1 million per player payout for the winning team. Shams reported in September that the league had picked up the discussions again. Adam Silver is a proponent of the idea, but lacked the votes in the past. Silver is said to model the concept of European soccer tournaments such as the FA Cup, um, but those differ from the league's uh, proposal in a number of key ways, such as being open to clubs from multiple levels in addition to the fact domestic leagues do not have a playoff to determine the champion. Um, I'll kind of kind of get into that a little bit, uh, Tyrese, before you get going uh, with your with what you're going to say about it. Um, so for people that are not familiar with English Premier League soccer, um, the way that you crown a champion in that league is by a point, uh, by, by points. So um, you play, I believe, 38, 36 games, and the, the most wins or like the amount of points that you get um, make, means that you're the champion. So it's easier to kind of do um, a tournament in that manner because um, – you don't have like there's not like a playoff already in intact um and i just feel like the the model that they're trying to go for is the fa cup um and it's just like another additional trophy to the premier league um where you're just adding another english trophy that other teams in the lower divisions can compete and get now what i will say and what i would kind of what i would be interested in is if g league teams could be added to this in-season tournament um I feel like that would be cool, uh, but again, that'd be a lot of, lot of like negotiating and bargaining agreements that they would have to deal with. But I think that's the only way that you could really fairly try to put this in because it doesn't make any sense to me why you would just put all thirty teams in a playoff pool when you could just do that without, you know, you do that with the playoffs. You don't do that with with an in season tournament. Um, but I've talked way too much, Tyrese. What do you make of it? <laughs> Um, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, it, it would give more teams the opportunity to, uh, you know, showcase what they got, you know? Um, so would it be all teams would be in that competition? Like, um, yeah, even the teams that necessarily would be out of the playoff, it was, if it was the traditional route, so they would eat, like, let's just say the Orlando magic, they would even yeah. have a shot, right? They would have a shot at this tournament. So, like, I'm assuming they're like, I can't, I don't know how it's going to be like, how it's going to be portrayed, but I'm assuming all 30 teams would be involved um, and it would continue to go on and go on until there's a final two teams. And so, you know, if like a, that. if a I, team, I, I, the only or, thing is, though, of, of it probably not passing the board level and why it hasn't is because the durability of the players. Yeah. That would be way more games, wouldn't it? Because you would have regular. How would that work? Wait, so you would have regular season, or would it just be thirty six games, and then you know, whoever that would—that's how it would be. It wouldn't be eighty two, right? Yeah, I'm assuming that they would take away games and have this tournament kind of be its own thing. But you know, I'm not sure if the players would agree to it. Just due to the fact that you know, there's also NBA records that could also be affected by that. Like, are the games that you play in this tournament going to count towards like your regular season stats? Um, which then, you know, kind of leads to rewards and incentives. Like, you know, you have, you have to score, like, you know, you have to keep your field goal percentage above, you know, 45% for the season. Like, does this tournament help or hurt you if you are doing that? Or like, for example, I feel like, you know, I feel like they shouldn't do that. I feel like they should just cut the season in half. If they did do something like that, probably make it 42 games. And then maybe make it like a, like kind of a you know sweet six like you know how the college basketball is yeah where all teams would enter and you know one would play i don't know 14 two would play 13 three would play you know and so on yeah um i think they should do it like that um it would just it would make it very interesting for the teams who normally wouldn't have nothing to play for because who knows right like there could be some team i don't know the Pacers or, or 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 the Knicks or something like that, they might get hot, right? And they they could make the finals or something. You never know. I think it would it would be interesting because you know you always have that Cinderella team, you know. Yeah. Even though I, it's NBA, I think it could transition. But I understand why a lot of people in in the board on the board shoot that down. You know, 
Yeah. Uh, I, th I think if the owners want it, I think that they're going to get it. Um, just through the I, fact I, I that. I think so too. I think they just lose a lot of revenue and, and money because it's so short. Because if you think about it, an 82 game season, then you got all the playoffs. They're playing like a hundred and some games, which means more money for them, right? So yeah. I think if you only make it like 30 odd so games or something like that, or 40 games, like it, 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 they're, they're cutting their money in half, their revenue in half, you know? So I think that's why they keep shooting it down because they're losing a lot of money. Um, yeah. yeah. It's interesting, I though. I, I would like the idea, but I think just from a financial aspect, uh, a lot of teams and owners wouldn't want that just because it cuts into their their money, you know, their budget or whatever they got going on. Yeah, but I feel like they'd find a way to like add it on top of the eighty two games. And I, I know this league, I know these organizations, not just basketball but football, the European soccer, which they just talked about in this article. I, I just think that it's such a money opportunity for all these organizations and teams to like make the money back from the pandemic i feel like this is the reason why they're doing this tournament i just feel like and i know there's many other ways to make your money back from the pandemic but i, I just think that they cannot afford to have another kind of situation and season like they did previous years or the previous last two years where revenue sales are down ticket sales are down uh merchandise sales are down and they just really want to get a lot more people in the seats and what way to do that by providing extra games for people that you know normally maybe might not even go to an nba game but if you add some sort of prize or um sort of a um a trophy at the end of it i feel like that would entice more people to like really to be honest with you yeah. overpay for these tickets um and i think that that's kind of what the nba is looking for is how do we make our money back from this pandemic because we lost a ton of revenue um and you know when they lose revenue like that it doesn't affect them more so in the future or it doesn't affect them in the current moment but it does affect them in the future um, because I think it's a trickle down thing when it comes to not making the money that you needed to, uh, during the pandemic season. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I, I just think it, it, it's, it sounds very good. And, 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 and like, you know, like, yeah, if I'm an owner, right? Like I, I would want that. I lost a lot, but you also have to think about the players in the NBA PA, yeah. because a lot of those guys are the ones who are having to say, so Chris Paul, Jalen Brown, a lot of these other guys, LeBron James. They don't mm -hmm. want to play no. That's that's that sounds like some X Games type stuff. They want traditional. So it, it's kind of like what the superstars want, in my opinion. Like the 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 owners of the team are gonna talk to the real stars of the league: Curry, KD, LeBron, Chris Paul, Jalen Brown, NBA PA, other members. And if they want it, if they get a unanimous vote and say, "Hey, we want this," but if you got guys who are like, you know, seven to three and saying they don't want this, I think they're not going to roll with it, especially if it's the top dogs. I think owners really don't have a say so because the players are the ones who are the product. So if they don't want that, you know, they're not going to vote for it and say, "I want it." Yeah, I mean, the you know, that's the product on the court. I I, th I think I agree with you to some extent, but at the same time. I think, you know, the owners have saw, you know, this like player empowerment movement. And I think, to be honest with you, I think these owners want to be like the NFL owners. They want to have more of the power. They want to, you know, kind of continue to like work on, you know, creating their their revenue, their, you know, generational wealth. Like I, I think these owners like realize how much money they lost. Um, I feel like yeah. during the during this empowerment movement. Um, and I, d I don't necessarily agree with the with the owners in this aspect but i think if the owners are really you know trying to you know what's in the best interest of the or of the team and what's the best interest of the of the whole association i think the the, the thing that they would say is like we need to have these in season tournaments we need to have more ways to make revenue um and and that's the reason why you know the nfl added a 17th game and got approved even though i don't think it was necessarily the right call um, it's because I think the owners have the power and I think at the end of the day, the owners are going to try to get back that power. Um, cause you know, they don't want another Ben Simmons situation and not to like point this, like, Oh, this is all Ben Simmons fault. But I think yeah. the, I, I do think the Ben Simmons situation really soured a lot of owners from, from like what's going on and, you know, want to put a clause in their contracts and put a clause in the PA, um, to kind of be like, Hey, we want to make sure this doesn't happen again. And I think. Um, I, I think this is kind of one of those like macho 
I would say machismo moves where it's like, oh, well, you don't want to do this? Well, fine. We'll create this in-season tournament so you guys will have to play. I really think that's yeah, what this but, is. But, Bernie, if they do that, the players would strike. You, you know, you like the NBA players in today's age with everything we've seen with Black Lives Matter, the power is in the players. If they do something like that, they're just not going to play. If they have no say in what they want to do, they're just not going to play. It's that simple. I mean... We know who really runs the league. It's the top guys, KD, Stephen Curry, LeBron James. They say we don't like what these owners are doing with this, with this, how they have this going. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, they're not going to do it. The the owners really don't really have a lot of say so like that, man. Like you see what's going on with the Phoenix Suns owner and how the, how the, how the players are calling him out and trying to get him fired by the, by the NBA commissioners. So, you know, I, I just think the CEOs don't, it's a little bit different than NFL, right? Because the NFL, it, it, it's always had that, you know, we, we own you, you know? There's, there, it's, it's, it's always been like that. But yeah. the NBA, the last, I would say, since the Donald Sterling thing, and then the thing with the Phoenix Suns owner, the script has kind of flipped on the NBA now. It's kind of like the players have control, in my opinion. Like, if, if the NBA PA and the superstars say, we don't want this, Mm-hmm. they're not going to do it because they're the ones who are making them the money and the revenue, right? Because they don't want them to say, ah, I don't like what the, they don't want any rumors coming out. They don't want anything coming out. So I, I just think it's a great idea. I, I just think it's, it's, it's really slim of happening just because they're changing the infrastructure of the NBA too much. Like you're, you know, there was a lot of complaining about, I think it was Jason Tatum on his interview. He was saying like, I don't like the playing game. Like, you could be a ten seed and, and and get to the playoffs. Yeah. And you could be you can be a six seed and get knocked out or something like that by him, which is true. So I, I think if you got young guys saying that, I couldn't imagine what LeBron and and Stephen Curry, because they were in that position last year. I, I just think a lot of NBA players didn't like that. They probably like more the traditional, just because it feels like you know you kind of earn it. Because if you're yeah. a ten seed, like. You can just get there by being hot at the end of the year somehow, right? You, yeah. you you win a game or we win two games and you're in. It's like, damn, like we work really hard to get to that eight seed and yeah. it doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. I mean, I think so at the I, end, I just, the only thing yeah, I was going to say just, is, as at like the end of the day, I think these owners want to make the most money that they can. Um, and I think the playing game was is one where they looked at it and said, like, we can really make some good money out of this for, you know, teams that are in the tenth seed. I think that they're really about getting their bread up. Um, and I I think that's really what these owners are really about. Um, you know, players are the same way with their contract salary, so I'm not gonna like hate on anybody trying to get their bread up. But I think that yeah. this is what we're really we're really kind of seeing in today's market and really in today's like sports is that you know sports be damned at this point it's all about making money um and and i think that the owners are trying to find each and every way that they can to make the most money that they can to really you know like i said recover from the pandemic do all these different types of things and i think the playing game is or this in-season tournament is something that they're going to look at and i think they're going to really try to convince the the players and again you, you may be right that the players may not want it uh, but at the end of the day, I think like I think the owners will compromise, and I think they will continue to like bombard the players with this until they get the right group of guys in there that might say, "Hey, you know, we should probably do this tournament." Um, and, and I think that's that's the 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 way sports works now in today's. Um, you know, they may have the lockouts, they may go on strike, but I I think that at the end of the day, money rules all. Um, when it comes to you know players and owners, and I think that. Whatever's gonna make them the most money, whatever's gonna make them, you know, continue the sort of like, it seems like these contracts keep going up and up and up, and then I mean at some point these contracts have to crash a little bit, um, and they can't continue to like, go it's just up. The TV deals are hot. The TV I, deals are hot. So just imagine too with this pandemic, you know, there's more people. There was more people home. So yeah, the, the, you know, there's gonna be more people. This pandemic is we're probably not coming out of this pandemic and probably truly until 2024, 2025, realistically, to where it's completely back to normal and there's no more variants. Yeah. So, you know, the TV deals and these contracts are just going to keep going through the roof because people are going to be home watching, which means more mm-hmm. viewership, which means more revenues with these TV deal companies mm-hmm. and third parties. So, you know, it's going to come crashing down, but I think it's going to be a few years from now. Um, yeah. until you know the pandemic is completely behind us 
But um, I, I, I just think, um, you know, a, a lot of these players, you know, they have a lot of they have a lot of say so now. It's, it's not like how it was in the 90s or the early 2000s or mid 2000s. Like we we seen that, like, mm-hmm. you know, with the kneeling, with the national anthem and everything like that. Like who would have ever thought we would see NBA players doing that? You know, yeah. Um, you know, and they, you know, the commissioner's behind it. He's behind the decision. So it's a little bit different than, than the NFL. Roger Cadell to me is way different than Adam Silver. And a lot of the, a lot of the owners in the NFL are different than, you know, I'll say 85 to 90% of the NBA owners. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I just think they're going to listen to the players because it's less players on each team than the NFL, right? So they only have what, like maybe what, 15, 18 guys realistically? Probably, probably like 18, probably 15, you know, with, with three yeah, guys 15, not suiting up. Throw in G League, maybe what, another 15, but those guys don't really count. So, yeah. But in the NFL, they have like what, 90 guys probably on a roster? 53, and then they probably have like 15 guys that are on like the practice squad. Yeah, practice squad. And yeah, so. Yeah, it, it's it's just smaller grouping too, and you know when you have a bigger grouping, it's more or less say so. When you have a smaller grouping, it, it's kind of more you know you listen. It's kind of uh you know then it's just a superstar too with these big franchises. Yeah, you know like the Lakers, the the a lot of these franchises are gonna listen to their players like the Raptors, the Lakers, um, the Brooklyn Nets, um, mm-hmm. you know the Heat. I just think it's not – it sounds good. I would like that, but I just think the players aren't going to want that. They're going to want traditional. Yeah. But who knows? Like, it could hurt. It could help with their durability too because it's less games, you know? Yeah. And we'll find out, you know, what, what the owners and, you know, Adam Silver and the players will decide because I do think that this is going to be a topic that continues to rear its ugly head and will continue to kind of be a, a forefront for Adam Silver – you know, because I think Adam Silver is behind this. So I think he's, you know, as someone that is a player's commissioner, I think he's really going to try to get the players to buy into this uh, playing game. But we'll find, or this in-season tournament, but we'll find out later on, um, you know, if they are able to come to an agreement or if it's still going to be one of those no, uh, just a no from, from the players. But um, let us know in the comment section down below, what do you guys make of this whole NBA trying to add another in-season tournament? Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Let us know in the comment section down below.